Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. This is study number 28 in the book of Genesis. And we come to Genesis chapter 29, verse 21. And Jacob has gone back to the home of his grandfather, several hundred miles away, for two reasons. To get away from his brother who wants to kill him and also to find a wife. And we pick up in 29, 21, after we ask God to add His blessings to the Word that we are going to study. And we do ask you to do that, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Verse 21 says, Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in to her. Jacob, Laban, and everyone else knew who Jacob was talking about when he said, Give me my wife. For seven years, the only woman Jacob ever showed any interest in was Rachel. Verse 22 And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went in to her. The Bible says, Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Here Jacob was deceived, because he could not see in the dark. And that is exactly what Jacob did to his father Isaac. Jacob pulled a fast one on his father, stole the, birth, the blessing from his brother Esau because his father was blind he could not see whatever you sow that shall you also reap 24 and Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah as a maid and so it came to pass in the morning that behold it was Leah I like how God says behold it was Leah <clears throat> surprise Jacob you got the wrong daughter. Look at that again. It came to pass in the morning that behold, it was Leah. And then the last part of verse 25. The last part of verse 25, it says, And he said to Laban, Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Well, it's called deception, Jacob. It's called sin. That is what he has done to you. How does it feel to be on the receiving end of it for a change? Last part of verse 25. Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Didn't I tell you about that rule, Jacob? I guess I must have forgotten about it for the last seven years. I'll tell you what, Laban was a slick one. And now Jacob knows how his dad and his brother Esau felt after he tricked them. Verse 27. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me still another seven years. <laughs> In other words, Leah's father says, Observe the seven-day marriage week with Leah, and then I will let you marry Rachel if you promise to work for me for another seven years. 28. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also, and Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went in to Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban still another seven years. Jacob always loved Rachel more than Leah. And Leah certainly did not help matters by deceiving him on their wedding night. You know, she could have said, Jacob, I'm not Rachel. Maybe Jacob would not have loved Leah if she had been honest, but at least he would have respected her. 31. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. God is kind. He is sensitive to our feelings. God does not want us to be crushed under the burden of our disappointments. 
which is why he brings good into our lives to balance out the bad. And God saw that Leah was unloved, so he did something special for her. He gave her a son. 32. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, The Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. She is trying to earn her husband's love. It won't work. See that there it isn't. 33. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Well, Levi gave glory to God for her first child and she also gives him credit for this second one here. Verse 34. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. 35. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. And then she stopped bearing. Leah committed the sin of deception, but we look at the grace of God. I want you to notice something about her fourth son. His name is Judah. Judah is the son of Jacob that will continue the messianic line. Jesus will come through the line of Judah. Now that does not make what Leah did okay, but it sure does show that there is life after sin. God forgives those who confess, which means that a person can have a good life and do good things for God even after they have sinned. Chapter 30, verse 1. Now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children, <coughs> excuse me, or else I die. Notice that, notice that one child would not be good enough. Rachel wanted children. Leah has four. She has none. This is not about motherhood. It is about competition. If Leah would have had four mules, Rachel would have said, Jacob, give me mules or I will die. And now you know why God wants it to be one woman, one man. Verse 2. And Jacob, Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of God? who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Jacob is angry at Rachel for implying that her lack of children is his fault. He says, I'm not God. Rachel, I can't give you something that God won't give you. 3. So she said, Here is my maid Bilha. Go into her, and she will bear a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. Now, this is a contest between Rachel and her sister Leah. And since Rachel is not scoring any points, she brings in a substitute. She says, Have a baby through my servant girl, and I will claim that the child is mine. 4. Then she gave him Bilhah, her maid as wife, and Jacob went into her. Jacob should not have done that. He should have said, Listen, Rachel, we're going to pray together for a child, and we're going to trust that God will do what is best. 5. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case. And he has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Rachel suggests that God liked what she did. He, she, she, she suggests that God rewarded her for her giving her servant girl to Jacob. Her reasoning went like this. Since it got results, it must have been approved of by God. Verse 7 And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. I told you this really wasn't about motherhood. It was about winning. It was about competition with her sister. 9. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, 
she took Zilpha, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. Leah sees how her lead is dwindling, so she gets caught up in the competition also. Leah throws holiness out the window and gives her servant girl to Jacob. <clears throat> 10. And Leah's maid Zilpha bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, A troop comes. So she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid Zilpha bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy, for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Leah says, Now I'm happy. Why was she happy? Because she has the admiration of the other women in the area. That is a very pathetic and unstable foundation for happiness. It is a recipe for depression because when you don't have the approval of others, then you're going to be sad. And it is a recipe for moral compromise because you will compromise what's right to have their approval. It is much better and easier to live to please God and let other people think what they will think. 14. Now Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Mandrake roots were used as a fertility drug back in those days. And so Leah's oldest son, Reuben, finds these mandrakes and bring them, brings them to his mother Leah. Last part of verse 14. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Well, that's pretty bold of Rachel, I would say. In essence, she is saying, I want you to give me what will help me beat you. 15. But she, that is Leah, said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Leah says, you stole my husband, Rachel. Well, now that's not exactly true. In fact, it was just the opposite. Leah stole her husband on what was supposed to be Rachel's wedding night. Last part of verse 15. And Rachel said, therefore, he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. Rachel makes a deal with Leah. I will let you sleep with Jacob if you give me some of those mandrakes. You know what? God did not approve of this garbage. You could pattern a soap opera after this family. 16. The young and the useless. <clears throat> 16. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. Leah says, Jacob, you must be with me tonight because I've hired you. Leah is humiliating herself. Verse 17. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah humiliated herself, but she also prayed. Because the Bible says that God listened to Leah. So she prayed, and God said yes to her prayer. But don't start feeling too good about Leah yet, because notice 18. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Isaacar. She says the same thing her sister said earlier. Leah is saying, God is so happy and he is so proud of me for giving my servant girl to Jacob that he has rewarded me. God bless me because I promoted the sin of fornication. You know what this family needs? A moral compass because the one they're using is spinning out of control. 19. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. Afterwards she bore a daughter and called her, her name Dinah. Notice verse 22. Then God remembered Rachel. And God listened to her and opened her womb. Rachel tried complaining to her husband. She tried giving her servant girl to her husband. She tried mandrakes, but nothing worked. And the reason none of those things worked is because God had closed her womb. Which means that only God can open her womb. And when she finally realized that God was her only hope, she prayed and he said yes. It was very simple. She should have done that years earlier. 
23, And she conceived and bore a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach. It was a reproach, a disgrace for a woman not to have a child in those days. Verse 24, So she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son, and God will answer that prayer of Rachel's also, and give her another son. And we'll see that next time. We'll pick up.